Congrats, Felix. Thank that you. That was a great win. Can you walk us through the key tonight? Today, not tonight. <laughs> yeah, we don't know with this rain anymore. <laughs> yeah, 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 it feels like night all the time. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, we started at night yesterday and uh, finished today, so obviously that's tricky, but it was good that I was able, I mean, I guess fortunate that I was able to break yesterday before the the stoppage and um, and come back today, uh, get through that tricky service game, double fall, the long rally. He hit an amazing winner on the line. Um, yeah, it was you know a bit of tightness there, but then um, as the second set started, I felt like my intentions were clear and I, my execution was was right, and I was able to to do what I wanted to do, and at the same time um, get free points from his side and and able to re return his serve pretty well. So um, happy with how everything went. Yeah. Hi, Feliz. Yeah. I would like to speak to one, ask you about uh, Carlos Alcaraz, your yeah. nice uh, rival. You know each other really well. Yeah. Uh, you are one of the very few players with a head to head uh, uh, won against him. Uh, what do you expect about uh, the match? And do you think it's going to be a, a night match just to give you some rest? I don't know. I don't make the schedule. But uh, in terms of the. The challenge, yeah, well, we, it's the first time we play on clay, so that's obviously different. Uh, I beat him in indoors, he beat me twice in uh, Indian Wells. So, uh, very different conditions now. Uh, first time since US Open a while ago when he was, you know, just 18 uh, that we play in a Grand Slam. So, um, all these things together make it different, but obviously, it's as big of a challenge as it gets. You know, um, you play one of the best players in the world. Uh, so, you know, it's always a special match against him or Novak or, or Yannick. We haven't played in a while, but uh, these guys are, yeah, they're always a big challenge. And um, But I'm feeling better and better. I feel like um, I have more and more belief in uh, in my game and what I do. So, uh, yeah, I think that I have all the reasons to believe that, that I can win. Um, but obviously, we know what the challenge is. Uh, it's a tough one. Felix, um, congratulations. Some Thank some you. players go into matches with players like Carlos already thinking they're not going to win. But do you think for you it's a, not necessarily a great a good matchup as such, but it's a match that you can play your game without worrying about what he's doing? You have to play your game. I mean, I don't know if a player comes here and says he's not going to play his game, he's lying, or he's going to say he's able to do things he's not. Uh, that he doesn't know how to do, he's lying again. So uh, obviously, I go out tomorrow um, playing what I know, um, doing what I what I do well. If I do that, then let's see during the match how it goes. And obviously, I'm always open to adapt as the match goes on to see what I'm doing well or less good, and what he's doing well, and 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 adapt, uh, you know, my 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 game and my tactics. But um, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna prepare like I prepare for every match focus on myself and uh, let's see what level he brings so let's see what i bring and it's going to be going to be a good match yeah if it's congrats on the win yeah. i just wanted to ask you um but Dostra and sabalenka have just finished playing their two really close friends how do you find playing a close friend like if you've got to play dennis or something like that do you find that awkward is that a bit of a strange dynamic uh i think the younger we were it was because coming from juniors you spend more time together, you're playing doubles, and you know, juniors is kind of a different vibe. You know, it's less professional. Everybody's got now their own team and everybody's got their their own things going. But uh when you know, when we were younger, it was like, Oh, I'm playing my friend, we just had dinner yesterday together, we we're hanging out practicing, so it's like it feels a bit weird. Now uh there's a lot of respect always, but it feels more professional in a way. So I feel like Dennis and I we've played many times now on tour, or I mean it can be other players that I get along well with and um, you know you go out on the court you you're professional you try to win um, you follow your plan and but it's it's not really anything more emotional than that really hi Felix congrats I, I'd like to ask you kind of a, a general question if yeah. I could um, you've been playing tennis for so long we know it's a really tough challenging game that kind of I don't know reflects life and teaches yep. tons of lessons. Yep. If you had to step back and say, OK, the one or two lessons that this sport has taught you or given to you, um, yeah. what, what would that be? 
Well, there's a few, but uh, the ones that come to mind right now, um, I think that uh, the, the routine that you put in place for yourself, the discipline is stronger than the will, I would say. that That's one thing I learned is like, you can want things all you want, like you, badly, and I've wanted things badly in, in, in past years in my life, but it creates a bit too much tension, too much stress, and you put too much ex expectations, and what comes from that it comes frustration. Um, but when you put good routines in place and you stay disciplined and and you you're, you're clear with your intentions, then usually you're more relaxed with the outcome, you know, because you're you're less focused on the result and more focused on on th that routine that you're trying to put in place. Same thing in the matches. So, um, you know, I could go on, but this is like um, something that I think was a good lesson that I've learned in the past years. Last couple of questions. Felix, um, do you still hear from time to time with Tony Nadal since he is no longer part of your team? He, is he giving you some tips, advices? Thank you. We have a good relationship, uh, always had. Um, I have a huge amount of respect for, for Tony, um, you know, as a person. and. And I think it goes both ways, and we have a good relationship. And I've decided lately that I wanted to uh, to make the team smaller, and and just my coach, my longtime coach, my dad, um, that's more present, and um, you know, obviously the fitness physio part, and that's it. So uh, it was a decision that we made together as a family, as a team, and and, and obviously myself making the last call. But but uh, in terms of you know my relationship with Tony, yeah, we're in touch sometimes. He's uh, and I feel like we always, you know, we'll be in touch when we see each other or once in a while, a message here and there of encouragement. But, uh, but that's it, really. Yeah. Uh, first of all, congrats. Uh, you're coming back to your best uh, top level. Uh, I guess you're not surprised to see Sinner in the last 16. But what about Arnaldi, who beat uh, Rublev and is in the same section of your... Uh, draw. So, do you think, uh, first of all, what do you think about him? And um, he has to play Tsitsipas Pass eventually before you, uh, eventually, if you beat uh, Alcaraz. So, that's not easy. Off. Not an easy. But what can happen? Uh, I mean, what do you expect? And a lot what of do you know about him? Happen. A lot of things can happen. But um, no, to go straight to your question, Arnaldi, we practiced together a few years ago. In, uh, close to Monaco, and um, I kind of discovered him there, and he was still outside the top 100 coming up in the challengers, and I thought, man, this guy hits the ball well, and he's obviously moving well, and we can see he's so flexible, and he has all these great physical qualities, so I was thinking, you know, I'm sure we're going to see more of him, and then he progressed uh, in a very steady way year after year, and now, yeah, he's a dangerous opponent. Like, when you see the draw, and I saw that, for example, I think the first round, he was playing with Fis. And he was not seated. I thought this is one of the guys that unseated. That's, I mean, you don't want to have first round in a way because he's he's uh, he has a very complete game. He's pretty steady. He moves well, so he's going to be a tough guy to beat always. Um, and I'm sure he's going to be seated now uh, more and more in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Felix. Congratulations. What are some of the things you've learned from your previous experiences in the? second week and in the really deep ends of tournaments uh, that you think you bring into this journey, into the second week? Every tournament is different, really different. Um, because, I mean, do we remember, I mean, as people, do we really remember how we felt like two years ago in January? I don't know, like it's, it's obviously very different. You know, you don't always remember how you felt at that time. Um, and this time around, what's been a bit different is that I've been able to win my first three matches, just losing one set. I've had runs in Australia or U.S. Open where I was playing five sets, four sets in the early rounds. So I don't, f I feel like you know I've spent maybe less time on court to get to the round of 16s than I have in the past. So let's see if that's going to help me in the, in the in the future. And then what you can learn, um, just you know, try to do what you have to do, train well, stay relaxed, and uh, not stress yourself too much with other things, um, because you need all that energy when it comes down um, to the, to, you know, to the details of, of matches, and it comes down to the later rounds in the tournaments. Thank you for Bonjour, Felix. Tu as parlé tout à l'heure de, de, de ta relation avec. Euh, 
Tony Nadal, est-ce que tu peux nous dire un peu qu'est-ce qui t'a apporté le, le temps que vous avez travaillé ensemble, surtout euh, en particulier sur, sur la terre battue Terre battue ou d'autres en général, je pense que j'aime bien certaines choses par rapport à sa philosophie, euh, son approche d'une carrière, euh, euh, par rapport évidemment à ce qu'il a vécu avec Raphaël, mais je pense que bon, on peut beaucoup apprendre de ce qu'il dit des fois, j'aime bien juste être ouvert et écouter. Euh, à ce qu'il a à dire, essayer d'absorber le plus d'informations. Mais oui, j'aimais bien son, son approche par rapport à l'exigence qu'on peut amener jour après jour à l'entraînement, la capacité à, 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 à voir les améliorations à faire, puis en même temps essayer d'être euh, humble par rapport à l'adversité, par rapport à la faute, par rapport à des moments plus difficiles. Je pense qu'il m'a amené cette approche parce que oui, j'ai toujours été assez exigeant envers moi-même, essayer d'être... Euh, atteindre le plus haut niveau, mais aussi être capable d'accepter la difficulté mieux, essayer d'accepter euh, les défaites des fois un peu mieux pour apprendre. Et, et donc, euh, ça, c'est une chose, par exemple, qu'on qu a discuté des fois. Mais, mais après, des fois, on parlait de mon jeu, qu'est-ce que je peux bien faire, qu'est-ce que je peux améliorer, quel coup je peux améliorer. Donc, comme tout entraîneur, on essaie d'améliorer mon, mon, mon jeu de tennis. Quoi. Merci. Ciao, ciao.